welcome everyone in the name of Jesus. Every time, like my brother shared, we find ourselves in the presence of God. I'd like us to understand that it is an opportunity for us to be built. It's an opportunity for us to be changed. It's an opportunity for us to be transformed in His presence. Hallelujah. I'll share very, very briefly. We're out of time. Hallelujah. Because I want us to have some time and pray. Thank you, Jesus. Emmanuel. Emmanuel. We want to see you. We want to hear from you. ears to hear and cause our hearts to understand. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray that you breathe upon your word and let it be edifying unto us. In the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. Hallelujah. Verse 3. Ephesians chapter 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Verse 3. According as He has chosen us in Him before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of his grace through which he had made us accepted in the beloved seven in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace verse 8 in which he had abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence now i like you to be careful just look at verse 9 and 10 and 11 very carefully having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he had purposed in himself what is that mystery verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are in heaven and which are on earth even in him verse 11 in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him that worketh all things after the counsel of his own will that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ in whom you in whom ye also trusted after ye heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also after ye believed ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise 14 who is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory hallelujah please look up i'm going to be sharing briefly on the eternal plan of god the eternal counsel of god very briefly and then i'd like us to pray hallelujah it's important for us to know where we are going with all of our prayer and fasting and and um, vigils and spiritual equippings and preparations why do we do all of these things i mean everywhere around the body of christ you find believers preparing ourselves hallelujah we're praying fasting building in the word i 
abstaining from all appearances of evil to what end are all of these preparations i need us to understand because when we do not understand the big picture the eternal plan of god we will not value the things that we are doing and the spiritual investments that we are making hallelujah it's paramount that we understand that we're not just fasting and praying because we want to get to heaven are you listening to me there are so many believers who do all kinds of religious activities and all we are thinking about is just heaven heaven now heaven is wonderful are you listening to me we're all going there but i need us to understand that beyond the experience of heaven there is a prophetic destiny are you following now this is the eternal plan of god god had an intention in his heart hallelujah before Adam came, before the pre-Adamite dispensation, God had an intention in his heart. And that intention, although it seemed to have been corrupted by the, fall, the fallen race and all of this, is still an intention in God's heart. And according to the power of his counsel, it will still come to pass. Hallelujah. And so we must come to a point where we understand God's universal agenda otherwise all we'll be thinking about is to pray and um, uh, get married have children get old and waiting for two angels to pick us and take us to heaven there's more say after me there's more, there's more. the bible tells us there's more hallelujah and paul is attempting to communicate the counsel of god to the efficient church letting them know that there was an intention in the heart of man hallelujah and that intention must be satisfied you know we live in a generation where we do not realize that god also has a need hallelujah we are full of our needs and every time we go to god we go to god with our needs our prayers now there's nothing wrong with that lord my this my that i pray you touch me touch my family but we must come to a point as you begin to rise and become mature and perfected you will also realize that god has a need are you following me now that while he is committed to meeting your need you must also be committed to meet his need that's what we call koinonia a sharing together a participation hallelujah and god will never rest until his need is met he has a need hallelujah and paul begins to give us a prophetic picture of the counsel and the plan of god he said that it is god's intention that all things will come under christ remember that song he's changing everything in obedience to christ He's transforming everything in obedience to Christ. He's renewing everything in obedience to Christ. Hallelujah. So that all things will come under Christ. And now I want to explain to you the structure. Jesus Christ. The one who we call the Christ. To achieve the eternal purposes of God. He came under submission to the government and the authority of his father. I like you to listen very carefully. The Bible makes us to understand that although he was equal with God. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5. Hallelujah. That he considered it not a thing to be grasped. But he humbled himself. Hallelujah. Although he is also God equal in power and authority but he chose to come under the governing influence of his father are you following me now and so by reason of coming under the governing influence of the father a name was given to him and the bible says at the mention of that name every knee must bow of things in the heavens of things on the earth and of things under the earth and every tongue will confess that jesus is lord are you following me now and then when jesus resurrected he brought the church into a new dimension of glory and the the pattern is that the church will now come under the lordship of christ are you following me now 
So Christ comes under the Lordship of God and then the church comes under the Lordship of Christ. And as a reward for coming under the Lordship of Christ, He gives us His Spirit, the ability to make the world come under the Lordship of the church. Are you following me now? That's the eternal counsel of the Father. That Christ becomes the head of all things. And the only way He has to become the head is when He has a body. Hallelujah. The only way He is head is when there is a body. And so He brings those who have been alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and binds us together by His Spirit and calls us the body that validates that Christ is head. Without the body, Christ cannot be head. Are you following me now? So that Christ sits in a position where he is head of all things. And all of the spiritual preparations, all of the fastings, the prayers, the revivals, the revelation, the spiritual encounters are all to this end that we be empowered and be equipped to so conquer the world and bring it to a point where they will acknowledge the authority and the government of the church. And then because we are under the authority of Christ, we will not take the glory for ourselves and will let men know that Christ is King. Hear me, this is the need of the Father and the Spirit is on earth to promote this singular agenda, bringing all things to the Lordship of Christ. Hallelujah. It's important we understand this in our honest pursuits for the anointing, for prosperity, for power, for influence. We all want to be great. We all want to be successful. We all want to be celebrated. And praise the Lord, He's teaching us these principles. Hallelujah. We all pray in tongues. But this is useless if we all pray in tongues for hours and days without understanding the eternal counsel of God. Hallelujah. So every one of us is pressing. That it's a big picture. It's a prophetic agenda. Hallelujah. And every one of us, we have different roles to play in bringing that prophetic agenda to pass. Hallelujah. Then the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, that to this end, he gave gifts to the body. He gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors to do what? To equip the church to the point where they not only understand the universal counsel of God, but they are equipped to bring that prophecy into a reality. The fivefold ministry is not supposed to equip men to go to heaven. We are supposed to equip men to satisfy the heart of God so that heaven will come to the earth. I need to tell you this brothers and sisters that our going to heaven is real there's this rapture and we're going to heaven but did you know that we are coming back hallelujah revelations a new heaven and a new earth a holy city coming down then we will rule and we will reign with you so I'd like you to know that there is an agenda that is even bigger than this age, the church age. When we realize this agenda, then our pursuit will become eternal. Are you following me? When you realize this agenda, money will not cripple you are accomplishing this agenda. The anointing will not cripple you are accomplishing this agenda. All of them will be factors that will equip you to accomplish this agenda. The reason why there's so much abuse of the anointing, so much abuse of wealth and prosperity, so much abuse in the body of Christ is because we only equip men on how to get the blessings, but we do not let them know the purpose of the blessings in their lives. So we have everybody running and tithing. You find every pocket and drop it. And then you are expecting a hundredfold harvest. And then it comes. Now you are rich, you are a millionaire. And the Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. Because
because they do not understand that the purpose of this world is to satisfy the original intention the eternal plan of the father hallelujah then we cry for the anointing and pray in tongues for one year then a substance of glory comes upon us and we have the power to do great and mighty things and men begin to build empires for themselves forgetting that there is an intention in the heart of the father and that intention is that the church will bring all things to the obedience of Christ hallelujah and there is need for a reorientation because until we have this mindset we will not enjoy certain blessings and privileges that will come from heaven and it's always been my goal to educate God's people on the purpose of the blessings we have many believers who know their rights in Christ there are few believers who know their responsibilities in Christ I shall not die and then many people stop there you must finish that scripture but leave to declare the works of the Lord amen until you finish that second line you are not supposed to say amen hallelujah because it's a complete it's a complete ministry God is preserving you not so that you live and just be a liability to the kingdom hallelujah so if you are not leading to declare the works of the Lord you have no right to stop demons from oppressing you let me tell you something there is a dimension of your life there is a realm that you get to where your ultimate desire is to satisfy the need of the father when you get to that point God can allow a nation die so that you will live you are too relevant for the accomplishment of that prophecy there are some people that Satan cannot toy about it's not just about their prayer life they have come to a point where losing them is like losing a generation they are called choice souls hallelujah your degree of contribution to the advancement of the kingdom is so 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 evident there are some people Satan doesn't want to backslide he wants them to die there's no point backsliding. They are so much a threat to the kingdom of darkness. Satan does not want them to backslide. Just wants them out of the way. And I don't know how many of us belong to that category. That you can look at the Lord and say, Lord, in all honesty, I can say I'm living today promoting your kingdom. I'm not just talking about preaching and doing ministry on stage. I'm talking about actively contributing your quota to bring all things to the Lordship of Christ so that he becomes King of Kings and Lord of Lords there's no controversy about his place in heaven that's the reason why heaven is in a state of excellence the controversy is here on earth while he's saying I am King a system Babylon a system that does not come under the Lordship of Christ a system that contends and argues with the fact that Jesus is Lord and that system is in our education in banking finance family politics everywhere there is a contention about the Lordship of Christ and he's banking on the church to demonstrate to the world that he is Lord if the church fails to conquer the world system then truly Jesus is not Lord the proof that he's Lord is that we conquer this system not run away from the system that's what many people want to do when we run away from the system in ancient times the kingdom or the city that runs away from war is the losing side the victors don't run they stand and conquer but we have many believers running away from the system and as we are running we say he is Lord there's corruption I say me I, I, I'm not 
You're, you've got to conquer the system. That's why I say you are the light, not of the church. You are the light of the world. You are the one who represents the government of heaven. You are the light. You are the light. Then he says, let your light so shine. Not before angels. Let your light so shine before men that they may see. And in their seeing, they will glorify your father. So we have a ministry. Say after me, I have a ministry. Our concept of ministry has been terribly lopsided. For many of us, these are the ministers. The great men and women of God. Unfortunately, I need you to understand that these are the gifts that prepare the ministers. You are the ministers. That's what the Bible says. That he gave gifts the fivefold ministry are the gifts that prepare the church for the work of the ministry. When you live in a system and evil fails to prevail in that system, you are an ambassador. You have conquered that system and brought it to the obedience of Christ. So we are not just talking about having a ministry and having plenty church members and congratulating yourself. No, there's more than that. We are talking about apostolic invasion, taking cities where by reason of your being in a place, a territory becomes a no-go area for evil. We have too many believers who do not think society, we only think church. So our society is corrupted and polluted. In Nigeria, for instance, there's corruption everywhere. And even if you have not participated, I have, you, I have a question for you tonight. What have you done about it? Many believers like being passive. Just don't trouble me, leave me alone. You cheat and just go. But the Lord needs men and women who will not only understand his agenda for theoretical for what do you call it theoretical and theological purposes so that when you stand on stage you can articulate the mysteries of scripture no you must be doing doing your doing is proof that he is lord hallelujah we need men and women who will truly stand as beacons of light this is the concept of the kingdom. This is the concept of government. We need men and women who when you become a multi-millionaire will not mourn another liability. Men and women who can stand for righteousness. Men and women who can stand for truth. Understanding that even if no one sees you to reward you here on earth, it is your contribution to the advancement of his kingdom. Many times when we do nice things, we always want people seeing and rewarding us there and then. But when we are obsessed with the universal agenda of God, you will pump in your millions, you will pump in your anointing, and nothing will take his place in your life. Nothing. came to a point in my life when I said Lord deliver me from ministry and the nonsense that goes on in ministry it's a wonderful thing when you are honored in ministry they bring water for you nice cup and ushers do everything they pick up your Bible for you and you are the man of God until you are obsessed with the agenda of the kingdom such kind of people will not last in the next revival of the spirit that is coming it's got to be men and women who understand that everywhere they are, God is. Hallelujah. And that we are ambassadors. We are ambassadors. Ambassadors representing the government of heaven. Contribution our quota to satisfy the need of our Father's heart. To bring all things under the obedience of Christ the King. So every time God uses me to do great things and I say Lord be glorified 
I take a step to satisfy the father's need every time my brother does something excellent and the world looks at him and while they want to praise you and lie down and lick your legs you direct them and say Christ the King we need men and women who are ushers not lords ushers who can tell them there is a greater one that's what John the Baptist did he came to a point where he said truly he must increase but I will decrease we need men and women who will step out of the stage and say Lord I will contribute my quota I want the world to see you and not me and let me tell you something God is not a selfish God so he designed his system in such a way that before the world gets to him they will pass through you that's the reason why they need a believer hallelujah when you preach when you minister when the Holy Spirit dispenses his anointing through you all of these things are acts of God's giving heart so that you will be a partaker of his glory of his power of his kingdom but he expects something in return that he be glorified that he be glorified now that I have access to you before you come to a point where we cannot reach you in Asso Rock let's keep this revelation to our minds hallelujah that whatever you become in this life and whatever you have in this life is only a means to an end no matter how much millions you have in this life no matter the kind of anointing you have no matter the level of success in life and ministry is only a means to an end and the end is to meet the need that is in the father's heart that all things in this system come under the authority of christ the king and i've made up my mind that for every second that I have breath in my nostrils I will press to that point where the world will see him as king one of the best music groups I love is Hillsong I have never been disappointed at any of their songs you know many songs you hear nonsense then you hear one breath of fresh air they just exalt Jesus Christ properly I have never been disappointed because they are men and women who have committed themselves to exalt Jesus how many of you have listened to heal songs how many of you listen very very well get more of their tapes get more of their CDs all their songs directly exalt Jesus you see the skill the excellence but then they let men see the king there needs to be an understanding in our minds because let me tell you something the sovereignty of God is about to break into the earth and many people will be trusted with things that their prayer life cannot give they will be trusted with things that their word life cannot give unusual realms by the sovereignty of God to enable us accomplish this agenda I am convinced that nobody's prayer and word life is sufficient to equip us enough for the kind of revival that is coming all that we are doing are seeds to demonstrate our willingness to be used by God the sovereignty of God is what covers for our inadequacies and brings us to a point and let me tell you something there is a ticket to receive the sovereign giftings of God availability is not the only thing I know that it's, it's wonderful to say okay all God needs is availability but availability is not enough availability and total surrender say after me total surrender total surrender is not giving your life to Christ total surrender is Jesus being Lord of your life that's the concept in the baptism that you are immersed in a flood and they no longer see you they see only that water hallelujah the Lord wants to bless us the Lord wants to empower us the Lord wants to energize us let me tell you something you have not seen the anointing until we step into the mantles that the Lord will be bringing upon us. You have not seen levels of influence. We will command the, the 
respect of kings but God is asking a question are you ready to satisfy my need for many of us our needs oh God give me this give me that and that's wonderful but do you know that God has a need hallelujah every time he looks down to earth he's searching for men and women who are busy here and there satisfying the need of the master the need of the master is not miracles the need of the master is beyond just saving sinners are you listening to me all those things are wonderful and they are vital components of the kingdom but the greatest need in the heart of the father is that the church come to a point where we can truly allow christ to be head there are many people that have crime and they are forming heads in the church the hand now wants to be the head the leg now wants to be the head but the bible tells us there is only one lord there is only one faith there is only one baptism hallelujah and god is asking us a serious question tonight do you know my universal agenda do you know why i am anointing you do you know why i'm saving you from death how many of you heard i was so touched sitting when i heard um our brother sharing the testimony of his mom why do you think god kept you alive let me let me ask us an honest question why do you think god kept you alive i finished a vigil yesterday wrong i know people who came back from crusades on their way back they died i know many prayer warriors who are in the grave right now i know many word addicts one of them is charles finney's dicks a man who knew Genesis 1 to Revelation 22 of heart. Do you know the Bible that much? At least the scriptures. And he didn't just have the head knowledge. He had the revelation. Every time I hear of the death of someone, I ask myself, Lord, am I being relevant such that if we are to downsize people on earth, will I still qualify and step forward? Hallelujah. There are many of us that are full of our personal agendas. I want to be this. I want to be that. There's nothing wrong. Except that if your pursuit will not meet the heart of the Father, I can tell you what the end is. Frustration. That's why we have people who have tried everything. Tried money. Tried education. Tried marriage. Tried children. Tried power. Tried position. Influence and anything that life can offer but until we meet the need of the father to understand that we are ambassadors representing a kingdom and that we are supposed to conquer our territories and bring all things to the lordship of christ and let me tell you something frankly brothers and sisters christ can do it without the church he just chose to bring us so that we be partakers of this building process he said if you will not praise me there is in me the capacity to make stones to do what i've assigned you to do so never for once think god is crippled of power to compel the earth to come under his lordship those who have been privileged to have out of body experiences every time they saw the might of god they wondered why the earth is still suffering because it looks like at the snap of his finger he can bring everything in obedience to christ but he's letting us be partakers of his glory so he makes you a millionaire so he makes you a great vocalist so he makes you anointed so he makes you an entrepreneur and what do we end up doing just representing our own selves and our own kingdoms but the lord is calling us tonight that god has an agenda is what fasting about is what praying about is what abstaining from evil is what every preparation 
to come to a point where I satisfy the need. Jesus satisfied the need of the Father's heart. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And the man in Matthew 25, the parable of the talents, when they came back, he told one, well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. I am pleased. I am touched that you have met the need of my heart. Can I tell you something? If this is your desire, on the journey to accomplish that desire, you will collide with the anointing. You will collide with prosperity. You will collide with favor. You will collide with increase. You will collide with grace. Grace unlimited. All the people I know today, all who have been mightily used by God, as many as have studied their lives, they were never thinking of ministry. They were never thinking of anointing. They were never thinking of power. They just had a passion for the kingdom. Many of them would cry and say, Lord, use me. And they would fast for reasons they cannot even explain. And say, Lord, I, I want to make myself available. And in doing that, they collide with realms of intimacy and power that will cause them to shake our generations. Brothers and sisters, tonight's teaching is a call. The Lord is calling us not just to be possessors of things, but to realize that He has a need in His heart. So every time God blesses you, as you rejoice in that blessing, remember that that blessing is a tool to accomplish the need, to satisfy the need in the heart of the Father his universal agenda and Paul poured out himself like a drink offering and at the end of his life he knew that he had contributed his quota to let the world see a dimension of the glory of God to bring all things I made up my mind that every environment I am in I will pour out my life in life and death to see that all things come under the logic of Christ and let me tell you this has nothing to do with ministry Hallelujah. We need men and women who will make up our minds and say, I will hate what God hates. I will love what He loves. Even if corruption is the order of the day, I take a stand for the kingdom and I will let my environment... You know, listen, let me tell you something. You know the reason why God is talking to several people about being entrepreneurs? Because... Our standing for him is going to cost us something. <laughs> I pray that the Lord will grant you revelation to understand what I'm saying. That your, your commitment to God and his agenda will cost you something. For many people, you will be sad from the companies you are working because you will just not permit corruption. And they can't tolerate you. how corrupt our our systems are and God takes you to an office and you are seated there and millions are passing your desk and you are supposed to sign and you know that this is corruption at that point you have to choose you will not choose it here in Koinonia, you will choose it in the office there and let me tell you it's not a compulsory choice because you can align with the system or stand at all costs to contend and say in doing this I will not bring all things under the Lordship of Christ and no matter what it will cost me I am making a stand for the kingdom and let me be honest with you there are many of our parents that where they are today is not because they are not serious people is the price of their contribution to satisfy the eternal heart of God the counsel to bring to pass his prophetic agenda that's why the bible says you should judge not when you see someone going through something before you open your mouth and start speaking shut your mouth and understand what the person is doing because i tell you the truth there are men who have offered their lives and their blood to see that the 
the satisfaction that the master's heart is satisfied for such people titles cannot have an influence over their lives again for such people no amount of naira and copper will have a place in their hearts for such people no amount of influence will take his place and if ever i have a prayer i told god i said lord take my life one day to stop representing you take my life see through prayer one day for me to stop representing you if i'm going to stop representing you on thursday on wednesday let me quietly go yes the world will give all kinds of reasons some will say we knew it is too busy others will say i have i need whatever it is let me quietly go but that i cannot stand it one day in my life where i'm not representing his government directly has nothing to do with eni has nothing to do with koinonia has nothing to do with ministry it's a cry in our hearts he's bringing everything in obedience so this is a training ground god is preparing us for the things that are coming and i'm announcing to you great glory is coming however you must be prepared to use all of the blessings that god will bring to you as tools to satisfy the need of the father's heart to so represent him in every area of your life to represent his government and let the world see jesus let the world see jesus not joshua selma not the worship team not koinonia if all of our glory and crown is that many people came for this meeting tonight our glory and crown that we have good sound equipment then let me tell you something that's a testimony of the prophet that said woe you know what woe is i love him more than anything he can give me in this life let me tell you something i told him i said lord if you do not bless me with anything in this life it's too late i can't leave you again even if you tell me my name is not in the book of life no problem so long as i love you i will go all the way who is there like you there's no one beside you to praise your name I leave the earth to worship you who is the like you who is the like you there's no one beside you so my ministry to leave the earth to worship it's my ministry on earth today to lead the end to worship you who is the like you who is the like you there's no one to be compared with you but the world does not understand it so we are here to lead the earth we are here to set the pace I lead the earth
is coming. That's why the prosperity is coming. That's why the influence is coming. I need the earth to worship you. I need the earth in my life to worship you. raising a generation of men and women who will not compromise for money who will not compromise for power who will not compromise for influence tonight is a commitment the Lord is crying with a need in his heart from the throne there is a cry there is a cry there is a cry a search for men and women who will allow Christ to be the head of the church. To worship you, to worship you. To worship you. God has a cry. To worship and you. And tonight, to worship He's letting us have His cry in our spirit that He also has a need. To worship you. To worship you. To worship you. Oh Lord. To worship you. To worship you. can God trust you look at me this, this is a serious meeting tonight we are going to pray but there is a question is, see hear me God is not withholding the anointing can he trust you God is not withholding the wealth can he trust you God is not withholding the influence he's not withholding the favor can he trust you? There are many of us who shout, Lord, I will serve you. I will give you everything. I will let the world know. And just a little influence, God brings to your life. And his government cannot be seen again. John the Baptist said, I must decrease. That he will increase. To let the nation see him. Hallelujah. We're going to sing that song, just a part of the song. Distant shores and the islands will see your eyes as it rises from us. As it rises from Distant shores, distant shores, and the islands will see your eyes as it rises from your church. The power that you get from. And come on, rise up on your feet and your listen. And say, Lord, in my generation, in this time, in this dispensation, I will let my world see you. No compromise. No compromise. Wherever you send me to, wherever you send me to, in ministry, in business, in politics, in my home. You have a need. I will stake my life to see that the nations come to the Lordship of Christ. Parakete balarabasa. Jesus. 
represent this represented in business. This represented in business. This represented We need to raise a cry. And say, Lord, we will bring joy to you. We will bring joy to you. We will bring joy to you. We stake our lives to bring joy to you. Make sure you are praying. Say, Lord, I obtain grace to be a true ambassador. I understand that you have a need. I understand that you are blessing me to promote your kingdom. Oh Lord, we ask for the nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord told me something. I've shared it here. Friends, I submit to you. People ask me, What's the secret of this? What's the secret of that? What's the secret of power? What's the secret of grace? Now here and there, there are principles to follow. But the greatest secret I know is to win the heart of God with your commitment. It defies every law that I know. If you win the heart of God, he said, I have found my servant David and with my holy oil, I have anointed him as a reward for finding a man after my own heart. How come there are six billion people on earth, but God is still searching for men and he rejoices when he finds one. I told God, find a vessel. Oh, find a vessel. Find a vessel. Find a vessel. Find a vessel in me. We are going to raise a cry. We we'll hold our hands all over us. We pray in the spirit. We are going to be saying, Lord, grace to satisfy the need in your heart. Grace, come on, pray. Go ahead and play the instruments. Pray. Grace. 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 Sheka bariata balara. The church is praying. Grace. Let grace be released upon us to represent you. Grace to be ambassadors. Grace. Grace to stand for truth. Grace to stand for righteousness. Grace to stand for integrity. Grace to represent this government. Grace. Grace. We will not compromise. Grace. We are resolute. Grace. We are an army that can be trusted. Grace. Grace. We shout grace. We are the generation that will not fail the king. We are the generation that will not fail the king. We are the generation. There is a mandate upon us. There is a prophetic word. We will not fail. Grace to stand to the end. Grace in the midst of corruption. Grace in the midst of perversion. Grace in the midst of compromise. In life and in death. Grace. 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 Go ahead and obtain grace. And say, Lord, I know if I'm set to meet your need, you will meet my need. All oh, the distant shores, the islands of nations, they will see our light. They will see the light. Our generation will beam this light bright and strong. We will raise a banner, not a banner of denominationalism, not a banner of our personal accomplishment, a banner, Christ the King, Christ the Lord. This is a generation that will see the face of the God of Jacob. Beyond money, beyond power, beyond prosperity, Beyond influence, beyond marriage, beyond favor, beyond.
beyond education, beyond success, beyond accomplishment. They need the eternal counsel of God. Muimaka, muimaka, muimaka sujada, muimaka, muimaka, muimaka. We are the church. Muimaka, muimaka, muimaka sujada, muimaka, muimaka, muimaka sujada, muimaka.
Say cry. Give myself away. That's the last song of commitment tonight. Lord, I, I give, give myself away. So you can use me. I give myself away. Make it a cry tonight. Lord, I you give myself away. I give myself away. So you, so you can use Let's me. I give myself away. I give myself away. That's what the Spirit is asking tonight. I give my heart away. Will you give your heart away? So you, so you can use me. Will you give your faith away? Yes, you have made greater commitment. Oh Will you give your faith away? So you can you Oh, arise tonight. Oh, I give myself away. Champions. Leaders. I give myself away. Revivalists. So you can use the Lord. Custodians. Lord, I give myself away. Custodians. Of the coming movement. Yes. I give myself away. Greater than the Azusa Street Revival. So you. Can you use me? Greater. I give. I give myself away. Lord, I give. Lord, I give myself. I give myself away. So you can use so me. You can use me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has been examining our hearts because of his glory that is coming upon us. I don't know any greater way to prepare for the glory. I don't know any greater way to prepare for revival. We are not just a bunch of visionless people trying to be successful. We are men and women who are obsessed with the agenda of heaven. And that for every breath we take on the earth, it will be accounted for by our tenacity and sacrifice. Hallelujah. Father, tonight, together as a church, we cry. We are making declarations of faith that we will stand for you. We will not just watch evil happen and be passive about it. Lord, as you grant us the grace, we will break through barriers of nations. As you grant us the grace, we are making commitments to represent you, to let the world see the fullness of who you are, to bring the systems under the Lordship of Christ. That in our generation we will erode corruption from Nigeria. That in our generation we will stand as beacons of light. Lord, you can trust us. We will not fail. We are making commitments under heaven. That as you grant grace, we will not fail. 
as you grant grace we will not fail in our homes and our families our children will only know that divorce was an ancient thing our children and families will only know everything we did not benefit from our generation will represent and we will let our children give you glory the love for Christ will be the norm in our society our generation will enforce it our generation will buy MTV buy channel O buy all the systems let me tell you we are coming if our hearts are right there is no amount of wealth that will not be given there's no amount of access anointing power that will not be given hallelujah Praise God. for time's sake we have to end but i want to make an altar call you're not here and you're not born again here and you're not born again it's not giving your heart to the lord when a serious business of equipping and preparing men and women hallelujah and i'm going to ask you to come out if not giving your heart to the lord or at one time or the other you have given your heart to the lord but you've just stepped out of the way of the kingdom for whatever reason tonight he's calling you hallelujah as we raise this song your kingdom reigns i'd like you to leave your seat and come please quickly we're out of time don't sit back there as the holy ghost is convicting you leave your seat and come out here hallelujah Go ahead and come. Come out as the Spirit of God is convicting you. Hallelujah. You need to make your ways right to God. With God. God is giving you an opportunity right now. Leave your seat and just walk to the front. Leave your seat and walk to the front. Hallelujah. As the Holy Ghost is convicting you. sin and Satan and I declare that my life will bring you glory I receive grace by the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life hallelujah I congratulate you for this great decision don't be ashamed of your tears I want you to know that we love you no one condemns you 
ministry of condemnation does not belong to the church and it doesn't come from the Lord we love you just as you are and I want you to know that God will make absolute wonders out of you hallelujah praise the Lord now very quickly I just like you to follow the ushers to have a word with you and you'll be back just turn back and appreciate them even as they go love them for this bold decision they are making for the kingdom asking that you watch over this child because before she enters the teen age I see that she begin to have frequent visions I see that you have a visitation and encounter by the Lord Jesus Christ so God says you should watch over her watch over her there are many people with eye problems I don't know but it's a lady the Lord shows me particularly behind from this place that God wants to heal. I don't know who that person is, but I speak that the Lord brings perfection to your eyes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release the healing power of God to come upon you and bring perfection to your eyes.
forever you reign. Come on, worship him. Forever, forever, and ever, and ever you reign. Forever, and ever you reign. Forever, and ever you reign. saw one that looked like the son of man he said an authority was given unto him he said and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom Isaiah said of the increase of his peace and his government there shall be no end so when we say Lord forever you reign we are not just trying to recite a song forever and never, and never you reign forever. You reign. of kings yes you are the lord worship him of lord yes you are the king yes you are of kings you are the lord in a world where many doubt is lordship Oh, we worship you. Oh, 
some presence in this place we can do nothing without your presence you are the only one who releases miracles you're the only one who transforms lives Come on, sing it to him. You're the God. You're the God of the heavens and the earth. Can you worship him? The King of kings and the Lord of lords. We worship your majesty. We worship your majesty. You're the God of the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. For you are bigger than what we say. Say, you are bigger than what we say. Come on, just watch it. This is part of the meeting. You are bigger. You are bigger than what we say. Yeah, yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we give you praise tonight. Thank you for your presence in this place. We have come unto the only wise God, the one who is able to bless, to transform. And Father, as a family of faith, we have come inside and outside, heralding Jesus, opening up our spirits for more more intimacy more power more grace more revelation greater light to rule in the day and to rule in the night hallelujah hallelujah never forget hallelujah that every time we come into god's presence you must come with an expectation hallelujah the Bible says that he that cometh unto God must believe that he is. In other words, he exists. And then that he is the rewarder, not of everybody, but of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Many of us have left far and near, coming to learn of him, to worship him, to enjoy his presence, to receive his word. For every time his word comes the spirit of that word comes into you and he sets you he says in ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 he said the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet the spirit entered me you're not just hearing words paul said when i came to you i did not come with the excellency of speech but in the demonstration of power that your faith might not be upon the wisdom of man but the power of god what you are receiving in this place is spirit and life. For John 6, 63 says that the flesh profited nothing. It is the spirit that quickened it. Say the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, life, capable of making you become the, what the word of God is saying. And he made two great lights. One to rule the day and another to rule the night. I've said it here and I will keep saying it. You will only arise and shine 
to the degree to which your light comes it says arise shine not because you want to arise but your light has come the bible says the entrance of thy word give it light hallelujah and the lord is teaching us his ways the bible says ask for the ancient path and walk in it the ancient our fathers the fathers of faith there were things that they knew they understood certain patterns of the spirit that gave them mastery and accuracy the bible says that if a man desires mastery yet is he not crowned until he strives lawfully it takes a level of diligence and tenacity understanding the principles and the ways of the spirit and then when we understand his ways we will come into alignment with his spirit so that it will be in the earth as it is in the heavens and then the world will know that we are not just noise makers the world will know that we are not just tongue talkers they will see that there is something that is the bible says there is this treasure and is resident in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of god and not of us great men doing the works of god it says we have been created in christ jesus we have been called created preordained predestined that we should show for revealing his majesty and his glory and god brought every one of you to learn of the ways of the spirit hallelujah the ways of the spirit brings to end confusion because it takes education and orientation by default as a result of the fallen nature many people began to come up with their concepts and ideologies of how to live and reign in god's kingdom if you want to function and be effective in god's kingdom then you must understand his ways his patterns the bible says the nation of israel saw his acts the manifestations of power but Moses knew his ways and tonight we have a prayer God teach us your ways we don't just want to see the power show us from the archives of the spirit how did the fathers tread this path how did they come into alignment with the kingdom that Elijah will say that I that stands in the presence of God how did the psalmist understand the pattern of entering worship and coming into the presence of God he said in Psalm 100 he said enter into his gate with thanksgiving how did he know that the throne room had gates and courts open our eyes so God that we may see we are tired of religion we know that there is more save us from the arrogance that lack of light brings to the body bring us to a point that our eyes will see and let me tell you something the proof is that we will be carriers of light not under any situation and circumstances the bible says he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above is above cosmos the system babylon the system that aims to subject people and bring them under the bondage of satan the bible makes us to understand in romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says for i reckon that the sufferings the constraints that our rehearsal and dealing and pressing i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us then verse 19 says for the ns expectation of creation they are not waiting for everybody they are waiting for the manifestation of those the bible calls the sons let me tell you something hold on there are many words that are used as sons but there are two important ones one is called technon the other one is called weos technons mean it means a child one who is void of knowledge weos means one who by reason of understanding has attained the same status with his father so when jesus called himself the son of god they said he was god because he used the word weos he said by reason of understanding i have been elevated to a position where i can function in the god class grant us light oh god grant us light we are tired of darkness we are tired of the world asking where is our god grant us light for the entrance of your word brings light and lord cause our hearts to be simple give us understanding the bible says in all thy getting get understanding exalt her and she shall promote thee 
she shall bring an ornament of glory upon thy head when thou dost embrace her he said does not wisdom cry crying in the streets searching for as many who can be interested we live in a day and age where all we want is hype so that we just jump and rejoice let me tell you that's not the way of the spirit everyone who has attained mastery knows that there is no glory without a story there is no there is no increase and lifting without a constraint and a building if you came here just to jump up and get excited you can pack your bible and go back this is a school of the spirit where the word of god will radically put a paradigm and shift you until you come into alignment with the kingdom then at that point you will legislate that the king that you are has nothing to do with ministry has nothing to do with titles has nothing to do with prophet or apostle has everything to do with the revelation of your position and your degree of alignment in the spirit you are lord you are lord you are risen from the dead you are lord the light is shining tonight causing the veil the bible says until today as they read moses the veil is still covered in their eyes can we, so can we sing that song just one more time you are lord you are lord you are lord shining is shining upon you for the sake of your family for the sake of your generation Obadiah 21 says Savior shall come out of Zion light is shining that's what God is bringing your direction in the darkness Hallelujah. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We apologize for being late. We're just coming from a journey. Hallelujah. I bless God because is causing our eyes to see let me see how many of you have been blessed and transformed in this place sincerely from your heart hallelujah we have a goal we have a target not that which was set by man but that which was given by god to equip the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers and pastors he said for the edification the building up of the saints that they will be equipped to do the work of the ministry to the end that all of us will come to the fullness of the stature of the measure of christ to the end that we are matured not tossed through and fro by every wind of doctrine hallelujah and by the grace of god it's always our desire to make your two or three hours that is spent every friday worthwhile hallelujah we are committed under heaven to ensure that there is no week you come and go back the same hallelujah that you equip something not just say okay i was blessed no that you can see that you are coming into greater alignment hallelujah and so i welcome everyone inside and outside I'll be doing a brief teaching and then we'll pray <clears throat> hallelujah now there's a series that we have um, but then by the leading of the spirit I'll just touch on one area of it hallelujah I'm going to be talking on kingdom economics kingdom economics that's the whole series hallelujah kingdom economics kingdom economics is a whole series but tonight i'll briefly be talking on financial freedom we've not 
done any teaching that has to do with finances and so it's very important hallelujah it's our desire in this place to see people who are not just spiritually fit listen it's our desire to not just see people who can pray in tongues and heal the sick and command miracles hallelujah it's our desire to see people who are economically empowered hallelujah so that they can become a blessing to their people how many of you will agree with me that most of the quarrels and the fight in our homes and our societies are directly or indirectly related to money many of you your parents begin to frown the moment you talk about money when you talk about god and his kingdom and rapture they are happy hallelujah it reminds them that this world is a temporary place the moment you talk about school fees or anything they get very sad hallelujah i'll not go into detail because of our time i want us to really take out time and pray so i'll just be sharing these principles very important hallelujah one of the most tragic things that has happened to the youth in this country nigeria is that the fathers or the educators those who claim to be the models for us to follow especially in the social and educational system have not been able to understand by the spirit the ways of god and the patterns that lead to true success i follow me now and so from the universities the polytechnics the institutions they teach and train people according to curriculums that if we are not careful may not be relevant in our generation hallelujah so many people are raised and trained and unfortunately the family that is supposed to be the unit of education hallelujah many people say charity begins at home not just charity every true thing should start at home are you listening to me and many of us did not get the right training and the right building from our homes many of us had to learn everything most things that we know today from the media or our peers and and some of these things have been devastating they have put a mindset in us that will lead us to failure if not aligned by the spirit of god hallelujah especially for the concept of wealth increase prosperity finances there has been a a misconception it grieves my heart every time i have the opportunity to talk with people especially tongue-talking christians concerning the subject of finances it's amazing how we keep blaming the church over misuse of funds and other things and the leaders the five-fold ministers do not realize that it's a responsibility to teach can i tell you something do not accuse any man of anything you have not taught him are you listening to me if i've not taught you how to be polite i have no right to accuse you of being impolite is that correct that's why the bible says the days of our ignorance god overlooks so it takes knowledge and understanding the average youth in this country has this as his financial paradigm i write jam go to the university try to do well and get good grades pray in tongues as much as i can call forth as much as i can then when i'm in final year i begin to be nice to different uncles and relatives and we aspire and look forward to nmpc and shell and chevron and everywhere only to graduate and face an endless cycle of heartbreaks and disappointments there's such lamentation you read it in the papers you read it everywhere many churches are full of tongue-talking believers who are poor cannot help themselves cannot help the government cannot help the society and then the interesting thing is many people have tried using their own principles to achieve god's result and the frustration has led to all kinds of demonic and satanic messages about wealth and prosperity the most common being that wealth and prosperity is demonic is satanic is bad and it leads people to hell hallelujah and the man of god who is preaching that message has his jeep waiting for him outside 
the man of God who is preaching that message has many prophetic offerings to be given to him after service the man who is preaching that message and misleading people has his children in the best of schools are you following me the man who is preaching that demonic message has millions stacked in his account the man who is preaching that demonic message has a sumptuous meal baked chicken kebab all kinds of things in his house and then we begin to teach and cripple the body another erroneous mindset is the concept that wealth and prosperity is carnality materialism and so many believers have said take the world give me jesus and then the bible says for god so loved that world hallelujah and and so we're we're giving ourselves an alignment how many of you have been taught comprehensively in your university or polytechnic or school anything about financial education nobody over 95 percent of us if at all um if not more than that did not learn things like tithing and giving from our families is that correct that's terrible and so we have a responsibility not just to teach us to pray in tongues and to release the kingdom and the power and the glory of god but to become economically empowered and let me tell you something you will never never attain mastery in any area until you understand the laws that govern that area are you following me now many of our parents are languishing people are crying recession recession people are packing up yet in the midst of it like goshen and the land of egypt where there is darkness and people are dying there is light in another place and can i tell you something we will be wicked people if we do not teach you on economic empowerment because you know what i've seen more believers backslide because of money than as a result of sickness or cultism and other things i've seen more ladies give themselves because of money am i am i ministering to someone tonight we trivialize it as if it's not a spiritual issue i've shared it here i'll never forget some years ago when a lady shared with me how her mother was forced to sleep with the manager of her company because they were stranded and it happened with the permission of the father now please keep quiet be don't be there god forbid before you roll your hand over your head sit down quietly get your notebook otherwise you'll be liable of doing the same thing i need you to know that the parents of this dear lady were not stupid people there is a way you how many of you have seen your parents do things that you know this is not them the constraint that the present recession a true apostolic ministry must learn to address the societal issues at the moment any true apostolic ministry cannot shy away from the realities down ground how many of you do not know that the world is in a recession let me see your hands hallelujah banks have been matched how many of you know banks are, i mean banks that used to be the confidence of everyone ah. and we must be taught the ways of god otherwise we will sustain casualties in our lives but when we know of the way of god when men say there is a casting down we will say there is a lifting up there are many of us who have been praying in tongues praying in tongues and our families hate us all that you do when they're having a family meeting is for you to start the prayer and close it every discussion in that family doesn't concern you you are trying to legislate the counsel of god and they look at you and say what have you done in this family the church is where we are today not necessarily because we are not praying in tongues we have not been able to come up with a level of empowerment that will affect society are you listening to me we still have the church running up and down at government houses begging for loans begging for schemes begging for all kinds of things the church has turned to be beggars begging everybody for everything hallelujah as a result of not understanding the laws that god has put many men of god have become slaves to the wealthy people in their ministries the people have become the holy spirit 
hallelujah and tonight very briefly i want to share on a few principles hear me brothers and sisters i say it with all humility these are not things we read from books these are principles that we are living by and as many of you who can humble yourself to say you know let me tell you something like a great man of god bishop Oedeko will say only fools doubt proof are you listening to me archbishop benson idahosa said you have no right to criticize a man of a thing until you have done twice what that man has done isn't it amazing how many people have written books about finances they have they have lined tapes about finances and there is nothing in their life that shows that they know what they are doing let me tell you something if you truly know what you are doing with time some results you show is that correct if you are living in holiness with time the results you show if you are working in god's principles the end of faith is a manifestation that must appear unto all hallelujah and so this is a workshop really we'll do it very fast and then we'll pray i'm talking on financial freedom the series is kingdom economics i'll just touch on one of the subtopics and then we pray help us lord in the name of jesus you don't break listen to me look up look up look up you don't break free from poverty by coming to kneel down and say man of god pray for me let me tell you something it's not going to bring sustainable deliverance i listen to me there are many of our families that have finished all their money because they are trying to tap into everything the greatest way to tap into the abundance of god is first to know his ways hallelujah many believers have become so lazy that we believe that our seeds can do everything for us thank you jesus so what is financial freedom please write please write i beg you write something write something write something i remember a man of god pastor chris was sharing something and he said that a a very successful businessman was speaking in a seminar just training students hallelujah and then he was speaking on certain ways to be financially free and when he began to speak the students were objecting and he noticed there was a student who was always saying excuse sir this is not what our lecturer taught us and then at a point the man got agitated and he said young man stand up he said is your lecturer a millionaire he said no he said are you a millionaire he said no he said sit down i am a millionaire i'm telling you what the market is doing keep your theory and keep all your old junk and listen to me sounds like many believers to me the moment they begin to talk open to deuteronomy they say, ah power to get me. how has it changed your life it there's nothing that irritates me as an arrogant person who has no result hallelujah and we have lots of them in the body we claim we know one thing i have learned is that when i see someone that has something and has seen a dimension that i've not seen i humble myself and press into it hallelujah many people make noise about finances say all kinds of things yet it's telling on people we have more people telling lies doing all kinds of things in the body because of finances But the Bible says, I wish above all things that ye may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Don't let the devil deceive you and say your father is rich, your mother is rich. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What is financial freedom? Very quickly. Financial freedom. Now, look up, please. Can I have someone for illustration? Just anybody? Aaron, I like using you. God bless you. Now, look at me. The average believer in church, please look up. The average believer in church believes that he or she will be rich the moment you have a business idea plus capital to execute that idea. How many of you have thought like that? I'm telling you tonight is not true. That's the first mindset you need to change many of us have been praying oh god fifty thousand, and my life will be changed you have watched too much advert 
in, in, the, in, in, in the media says 50,000 can change your life and who wants to be a millionaire and so on and so forth and many people pray and say God this idea if only you can give me 100,000 and every time you are praying God is leading you to the word and you are saying God you are a wicked person can I tell you the truth be honest those of you who got the money why are you still not rich because you said if I can just 20,000 to start that recharge card business give me 6 months God has given you 3 years nothing has changed mindset by people so you see people running to banks for loans many of our parents many ministries although they are tongue talking they are living in this kind of error because we believe that financial freedom is equal to a business structure plus capital many of you will thank God tonight for not bringing the money because you would have blown it wasted it and been angry with yourself hallelujah oh God hundred thousand for that restaurant and see what i'll do you really think so follow me tonight say johnny at the end of it we'll pray and ask god to help us hallelujah financial freedom listen to me financial freedom is financial abundance right having abundance plus the time the time to be blessed by that abundance plus the peace of mind to live with it that's financial freedom financial freedom is not financial abundance what many people have been pursuing is abundance that's not enough that's the kind of thing that leads people to hellfire financial freedom is not just abundance it's abundance plus time look up how many of you will agree with me that there are many rich people who are not financially free because they don't have time their children have become strangers in their homes many people's spiritual life has gone down the drain in the quest to look for money money has become the order of the day money 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 every time and after yelling and yelling about the money they will never get it so financial freedom is not just having abundance no financial freedom is abundance plus the time you are never financially free if you do not have time many nigerians are far from financial freedom because they lack time and then peace of mind the word of the lord declares that the blessing of the lord it make it rich and added no sorrow i've seen too many sorrowful people claiming to be laughing in their jeeps but their sorrow will kill them their degree their sorrow is directly proportional to the wealth they are having hallelujah a man who used to trust his wife now separates he puts a partition in the house because he became a millionaire and he says young woman no longer my wife this is your room from today henceforth and you go and make a bed with a wardrobe inside and all kinds of things sorrow that's what the bible calls there are many of our parents that till today they are still suspecting us you left home angry because you fought with them they are suspecting that you are the one that stole the money and you are not even aware what kind of life is that sorrow upon sorrow begin to suspect everybody including your children that's not financial freedom that's not the desire that's not if God wanted us to get blessed that way then we will never be able to attain the things that he has called us unto. another point I want you to write is that financial freedom was not designed to be a lifetime pursuit get this brothers and sisters hear me you are not supposed to spend your entire life trying to be blessed you will never be able to accomplish your assignment that way Satan has distracted us with this ugly mindset that all about our life He's looking for money. It has become the determinant of our jobs. It has become the determinant of our geographical locations. It has become the determinant of several things. A man at 70 is still begging to look for job. Not because he likes it. He's still pursuing money. No, sir. God did not design this system that way. And can I tell you something about, about wealth? those who don't sit down to learn the principles 
will begin to envy and get angry at those who are paying the price to attain it and let me tell you if you don't sit down and take this serious tomorrow you'll be angry at your friends and your colleagues that's why god is bringing this our way are you getting blessed tonight there are two important factors that must be at work in your life for you to attain financial freedom and that's where we are starting tonight i love doing this teaching timeless principles number one why are people poor why are many believers poor why won't god just open up the heavens and flood it with cash why are many tongue-talking believers why are some of us still struggling with our school fees our parents are still struggling they've been trying to build houses for donkey years it has led them into all kinds of things we have called all kinds of people to come to our house to collect the remaining money that is left all in the name of praying with with all kinds of candles and garbages in our house the bible says that they know not neither do they understand he said so the earth is out of course i'm trying to provoke someone tonight to the end that we will pray hallelujah number one you will never become financially free not according to the kingdom's way if you do not see the need that's the first point there are many believers who do not see the need there are many ministries who do not see the need every time they raise the subject of financial education you see this spiritual atmosphere that people put and feel no 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 don't we are pressing into god there are new dimensions and let me tell you something there's an error i've seen in the body many believers just believe that you just keep praying in tongues and you are praying and then one day the heavens will be open over you let's finish up this this story and you'll find out that many people are going to be disappointed after 10 years of serving god diligently question the bible says jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever is that correct look up how many of us can bear me witness that there are many of our parents who are campus fellowship presidents some of them are pastors they've been praying in tongues for years and they are still poor can anybody agree with me on that why is that so there are even many of our families that have not missed out on tithing and giving for once but they are still poor how many of you have been tithing 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 it's just that you don't want to say it but it has been paining you because it looks like something is wrong somewhere and can i tell you something the error is not from god it's certainly not from god open our eyes tonight lord you must see the need so many believers do not see the need every time you are talking they have this air of ah i'm a lady i'm going to get married to a rich man i've, I've made up my mind let any poor man carry his, his his promises and come close to me and see what i'll do with him there's no manifestation pack your load and go wrong mindset got it from culture got it from films got it from all kinds of things you must see the need what does a need do to you number one a need creates dissatisfaction the bible says woe to them who are at ease in zion you can never break through a process until you get dissatisfied hallelujah you must get dissatisfied you must get dissatisfied get dissatisfied with the fight and the quarrel that happens between your father and your mother at all times get dissatisfied the bible says through desire proverbs 18 verse 1 a man having separated himself he intermeddled with all wisdom there must be a desire When you see the need it creates a sense of responsibility so many people are blaming the government we blame our parents we blame the government ah they are chopping our money they stop giving us scholarship if that they were giving my mind would have changed all oh, my my lifestyle and all of that i would not have been sleeping around calm down you truly begin to break through in any area when you stop blaming people and accept responsibility say after me inside and outside in the name of jesus please say it like you mean it in the name of jesus i stop blaming people i take responsibility 
over my financial destiny one more time say i take responsibility over my financial destiny yes a need brings you to a point where you you stand to take responsibility many of us are waiting for our parents to die we are praying and anticipating on their deathbed we come to visit them but we can't wait for them to die because we are waiting for something they call inheritance and before a man would die the the in-laws and the parents are already arguing about how to share things hmm. number two or still still on that point of the need a need breaks every limitation the moment you see a need for something limits will be broken in your life hallelujah how many of you have gone for lectures in the rain let me see your hands ladies how many of you have exposed your hair to the rain but you still didn't stop you just ran for lectures why when you see a need you will not see limitations again so many people see limitations and the reason is because they have not seen a need we are waiting for the day we inherit well from our parents my father told me as soon as i'm graduating a lexus will be waiting for me and one two bedroom i've been eyeing and your whole life is built on that mirage the word of god declares hear me woe unto any man who puts his strength in a man that man can be anybody your father your mother you know that song um your father may let you down it's not because it's a wicked man your mother may let you down even you yourself you will let yourself down the best and the greatest of any man is still a man. I told myself, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence I, I, I gladly retired from putting my strength in men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the first, the first factor is what? You must see the need. Say after me, I see a need. To be financially free number two when you have seen the need the second point is you will go for knowledge the second point is to go for knowledge you will never become financially free just by guessing and stumbling your way into it a great man said something he said if you wake up and find yourself rich be sure you were not sleeping hallelujah many of us have this mindset that oh god one day one day we have been receiving things that are hanging in the realm of the spirit for donkey years but the bible says let it be done in the earth as it is in the heaven that means it is possible that although a thing is in the heavens but it cannot be done in the earth hallelujah go for knowledge and the first phase of going for knowledge are you getting my points the first phase undergoing for knowledge is to change your mindset change your mindset we'll talk on that right now when you have seen the need and come to a point where you say look nobody in my lineage and my family has been able to bless anybody all i inherited was what people call generational curses that's what many of us came to know you just knew that nothing has been working in your life now god has done everything by the revelation of his word and by the reality of your position in christ he has brought you to a position where you realize that all of these ordinances have been nailed what are you going to leave for your own children hallelujah i am convinced that my entire generation is blessed because of me bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed change your mindset change your mindset change your mindset the difference between let me show you something proverbs 22 verse 2 i believe proverbs 22 can someone read please someone read very quickly then let me have two people i need someone who looks like a rich man come on help me i mean someone to start <laughs> all right start here hallelujah aaron you can stand here 
listen listen to this very interesting scripture all of you look up go ahead the rich the rich and poor meet and together. the poor they meet together where in this big earth it says what the lord, the lord is, the maker. is the maker of them all what kind of scripture is that he said the rich and the poor they all meet in the same place he said god is the maker of them all look up the bible never said god is the maker of them so god didn't make them so he made them they made they separated themselves look up there is a difference between the rich and the poor and the difference is not money write it burn it into your head i'm shouting so that it will enter your spirit the difference between the rich and the poor is not naira and kobo believe me change your mindset under knowledge hallelujah okay so watch this call this guy the rich god forbid this is just for hallelujah call this guy the poor are you listening to me look at this the basic difference between the rich and the poor is what their mindset say after me their mindset so the difference between where you are right now no matter how tongue-talking you are and where god wants you to be financially is what repeat after me my mindset don't be ashamed of it this is a training ground say my mindset i don't care what excuse you have to give let me tell you there is no situation you are in right now that someone has not gotten to a worse situation and conquered it whether it's that your parents are late whether it's that you were born your the, the map of your village is not in nigeria that's irrelevant are you listening to me so we are going to examine the mindset please get this there is something the rich do that make them rich there is something the poor do that keeps them poor are you getting blessed tonight number one the rich accept responsibility while the poor do not accept responsibility look at our society and see why people are poor all we are saying give us now and people lead themselves with placards how much to two thousand and they stand from morning till night go to offices of influential people and see a row of people waiting to seek for favor from morning till night say oh god well done no, i've been trying to i was wondering if it was possible to say and the man said, mm, i'm busy the poor the rich hates the poor and they say leave me i say oh god well done no. and you see the guy running and his and his children how many of you have seen your parents do that kind of thing i'll never forget when we used to rear goats we never ate one never suffered for it did everything and and where were the goats going government workers as i was carrying the last sets of goats it will I, it pained me because the bible says a, 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 a worker is worthy of his wages <laughs> you work so hard only to make the rich richer isn't that amazing the poor work from morning till night while they are working the rich are playing them like a chess what you people call your job is someone's company and the person is crossing his leg and playing the economy of nations like a chess and the poor are running you work so hard as soon as you make your money you take it to the market and you come back poor again only to wait for another month when will it end the poor work so hard so hard and take the money to the rich so what's their difference number one this guy accepts that i'm responsible for my finances yes my parents didn't try yes the government didn't try but i take responsibility this guy is accusing this man saying hadibi is my uncle my uncle god that child you think so and we are praying my father's brother sister's cousin is the commissioner and that guy never calls god punish him with this hallelujah number two 
this is one of the biggest point between the rich and the poor as you write it underline it the rich have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification paying the price today to enjoy the blessings tomorrow the poor they don't like delaying instant gratification sharp sharp now let's drop today and die tomorrow that's the mindset of many nigerians that's why we like all kinds of things get rich quick this and that there's one way bring one thousand go under the bridge in the evening and come i'll give you this we like things that don't have processes hallelujah but the bible says seed time harvest hallelujah so the rich know how to delay instant gratification i've said it everywhere that's why i love evil people oh no no come on don't think what you think i'm thinking i said this during kingdom well Summit. come on i was innocent <laughs> hallelujah amen because they have mastered the art of delaying instant gratification you see a young man they just give him scholarship fifty thousand, and then he carries the bb thing blackberry forty thousand out of fifty thousand what you have home and abroad give me your ping number your ping ping that is driving people crazy especially ladies all around give me this it looks like that's a happening thing give me blackberry and you squeeze life out of your parents you must give me that forty thousand. they say we are traveling to to cameroon you have not gone for how many years you have been gathering cameroon money then you finally buy the blackberry and then you don't have the amount to be recharging this every month say sorry what's wrong say, this phone you know all these kind of things i hope to change one soon there are so many people who have put themselves under stress because our concept of finances is that get spend just get and spend and we guys know how to do that hey guys i don't hammer oh yeah and all the psycho fans who are out to finish your money will follow you then you go to peter's say oh yeah help yourself jerry can i tell you something no matter how much tongues you pray god will never empower you beyond your level of managing his resources never god will never empower you beyond the level to which you can manage his resources because the earth is the lord's doesn't belong to you are you getting blessed instant gratification how many of us have been feasting on the seeds that god has given us can i tell you something this is god's principle god will tell you selena run down there and you will meet a great harvest when you run to that farm you will see a bag of seeds with wisdom to turn that seed into a harvest he said lord where is the harvest god said right there that is it many people do not understand god's system and that's why we get disappointed help us lord number three the poor spend and spend while the rich save and invest i cannot tell you how i feel sad over many church people we know how to shout and call forth wealth and that's important if you have not been calling forth money brothers and sisters believe me get set you are violating a serious kingdom law and you are going to remain poor yeah when my uncle has told me in the come okay oh. we have warned ourselves in this place to stop depending on men doesn't mean that god will not use men to bless you hallelujah the poor spend and spend isn't it amazing that those who are the richest in this environment are the ones who are modest and visionary those who are the ones loud and doing all of these things they really don't have much the pressure of trying to prove a point i said it during kingdom wealth summit i was i was taking an extra many ladies you are changing your weave on every week 
giving an impression like you're a multi-millionaire and you know you are not let me tell you something about pretending a status you have not yet attained the day your money finishes you'll be forced to still maintain that status although you don't have the means you have sworn hellfire for anybody that eats in zinc house now your fortune has gone your father has told you because you are stubborn he will not give you money again you are hungry you are dying the holy spirit is advising your guy to enter this zinc house And you have given yourself a mindset how can i at my level not so look up let me say this are you getting blessed tonight look up please let me correct something money can come through favor in fact according to god's economic system all right there are many ways that money comes remember 2009 10 10 kingdom wealth summit money comment hallelujah money can come through favor let me give you an instance god can tell me say josh so ten thousand naira to reuben's life that's favor right strangers can come and feed your flock that's favor listen to me what we do not understand is that money does not grow by favor money can come by favor money cannot grow by favor there is only one biblical way of increase and multiplication say after me investment say it there is only one biblical way of multiplication matthew chapter 25 matthew chapter 25 i'll try to really really be fast quickly let's turn there matthew 25 thank you lord jesus christ how many of us are seeing some light over our finances right now thank you lord matthew 25 if you are there say amen okay verse 14 matthew 25 14 inside and outside make sure god has your attention tonight this is very important for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his servants and delivered unto them his good unto one he gave what five talents talent means money many people say it's gift no it's not gift it's money exactly that to another he gave what to another he gave what he says according to his ability and straightway he took his journey hallelujah read verse 16 everybody one to read hold on he went and invested the word traded there is he did business are you following me who gave them the talent what did the master expect them to do with it multiply it correct and the bible didn't say they hold they held their hands together say, are you ready oh yeah fire and then they started bible says they went and did business are you listening to me help us oh lord okay verse 19 after a long time the lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them 20 and so he that received five talents came and brought what how did he multiply it did you see that he multiplied it again are you are you following me the word of god teaches us the principles i hope you know he said the kingdom of god is likened unto this is giving us the economic principle of the kingdom it says lord thou deliverest unto me five talents behold i have gained does that look like an investment language i have gained doesn't look to me like a prayer language beside them five talents more verse 21 his lord said unto him what so what does god tell those who multiply his resources okay well, let's see how good you have been reading your bibles thou has been what so he calls it faithfulness over a few things i will make you ruler over what are you seeing how to increase in the kingdom i will make you ruler over many things enter thou into the joy of the lord Twenty-two. he also that had received two talents came and then 23 let's read on 
and then he said that he also gained you know and um verse 24 looks like many of us are you ready now read then he which had received the one talent came and said lord i knew that thou art a hard man stop are you seeing the mindset of the poor they always give excuses always give excuses said lord i knew that thou was a hard man doing what reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not straw 25 and i was afraid fear and went and hid my talent in the earth hold on isn't it amazing that he put the talent in the earth and it didn't grow i thought you put seeds in the earth and they grow but this guy did something to his talent and although it was under the earth it didn't grow lo there thou hast that is thine 26 listen to what god is telling many tongue-talking believers and this is why we remain where we are in spite of the great future hallelujah god is saying that's beautiful but one thing thou lackest thou wicked ah look at the kinds of words the only other place this language was used was those who healed in his name and did all of this it says wicked and what slothful new testament language english students lazy lazy what although you can be a servant you can be a lazy one thou knewest that where i sowed not and gather where i have not sown verse 27 thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers and then at my coming i would have received mine with usury in other words according to god's system the worst form of investment is putting your money in the bank interesting he said you would have at least done that one hallelujah he said what take therefore this is a fearful scripture are you seeing why the wealth of many of our parents have disappeared although they are christians take therefore the talent from him and give it to who this wealth conversion that many people are saying is leaving the unbelievers some believers will be shocked that it will also disappear from their own hands it's in the bible all three were called servants yet it was collected from one and added unto another hallelujah praise god let's hurry up the poor go for results they like results they don't want to know the process give me fish don't teach me how to fish there are so many of us that have been blessed by wealthy parents never for once have we asked and said daddy mommy i'm of age now can you begin to teach me can you show me you have been very successful in your finances i've never cried for school fees i've never begged can you teach me what did you know that brought you this game many of us are always happy we have been privileged to be with people that can bless us we have never taken out time hallelujah the poor always like results that's why many people in the village are always fighting those in the city they are always waiting for those in the city to come and then they dance around your car expecting what give them something then you give them one thousand and they finish it or some of our relatives that are causing trouble in our homes you give them 10,000 today, they call you after two weeks. They say, oh, guy, it has finished. Of course. Say, send another one. Then when you don't send, they say, this wicked guy. She means your wife that has carried you away. She's a witch. Where will we end all this nonsense? Amazing that it happens in the church too. Hallelujah. The rich keep learning. A rich man is not interested in results all of this flamboyancy that people do you see someone with a jeep and you're like hey, hey i want that jeep anyhow anyhow no there are too many people that are after results the results are inevitable when you know the principles hallelujah hallelujah the poor depend on luck have you ever heard people say that in how nigerians are lucky oh it's my luck oh say mtn just came to build a mass on this person's land 
he just bought one plot of land mtn came to beg him and they are giving him three hundred thousand naira every month for using his plot of land when the holy spirit was telling two of you go and buy that land or go and do this the other person will say abba i will buy i will buy a car you bought your golf as you were going out somebody jammed it is still parked there sorry if i offend you tonight it's important it's necessary for us to enter hallelujah so are you getting the mindset now will you agree with me right now that financial freedom is not just having abundance i mean not just having a business structure and money to do it do you agree with me there are many people you open your shop and eat everything in your shop by yourself i see people do that just so and just carry something and, and then you are balancing the account and you go and meet as a prophet demons they are, my things are just disappearing you have poultry piece of ah carry 10 chickens give them now you, you forget that those things are reducing the point you come and call your wife madam come what is happening in this poultry then you see your son simply because he has not been smiling you say come here you have said joining bad friends have you go and bring your manager and your son says, what is there before he talks you are giving him the... look this is this is you are laughing but this is the story of some of us here but god wants us to change so let's hurry up change your mindset after changing your mindset realize that God's economic system works on principles. Oh, help us, Holy Spirit, that we get this. It's not guesswork. It works on definite principles. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk about just three laws very quickly. Three laws. Number one, the law of value. Right, the law of value. The law of value. Take it seriously. The law of value. Look up, please. Look up. Please, I want everybody to look up. This guy sells recharge card, for instance. Is that correct? Um, let's say this guy sells electronics. Look up. Because I do not produce what they sell, if I want to get it from them, how do I get it? I exchange it. So who will be getting the money? Those who have the products. Is that correct? The law of value. You must add value to yourself and you must have something to offer. Otherwise, you will remain poor. Wealth is for those who have something to offer. What do you have to offer? That was a question the prophet asked the woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. He said, what do you have in your house? The law of value. Look up, please. I see so many believers who pray that's wonderful confess God's word that's wonderful but I do not see us investing in knowledge to know the principles I want to provoke all of us now inside and outside how many of you this year have bought books on finances by kingdom people books on finances let me see your hands don't feel bad you will not go to hell so do you see that it's not God's fault that we are where we are Come on, no, nobody's condemning you tonight. We're in a school. Is that okay? We are provoking ourselves. Hallelujah. The law of value. Let me say something. I respect, although I am sorry because their wealth is soon going to leave them. All of the people who are not wealthy by kingdom principles. But these people sit day and night. This is what the rich do. The rich always get knowledge. And the poor are just searching for anything they can search where to patch and manage they were managing here and then the rich have the knowledge of the system many of us do not refine ourselves look up the bible makes us to understand in esther chapter 2 that although esther was already a beautiful lady are you listening to me was she qualified to stand before the king although she was beautiful but she needed to do what develop herself there are many of you that have been given potentials 
and talents by God every meeting you go you still see them shouting this issue of your talent and your potential and the giftings of God in your life and many of us have not taken it seriously hallelujah the Bible says the gift of a man makes room have you read that in your Bible the gift of a man makes room for him Steve please come hallelujah what's his name who called him strings his father competence gave him that name hallelujah are you following me now I knew when we were roommates with Steve and would come and Steve would be rehearsing on this guitar he had tapes of many people who had gone ahead of him are you following me now and he would rehearse and build himself that time nobody knew him as it were but he was building how many of you remember David David had potentials but he remained in the wilderness what was he doing in the wilderness he was building many of us get up with our own refined talents and we are angry why the world is not rushing towards us you come to stand to present a special number and what the keyboardist is playing and what you are singing is different the keyboardist is playing and then you just raise your song and you are not even aware that you have made a mistake you are not even aware that you have missed the key then you say i'm producing a debut album how in the world will i buy your album am i provoking you it's only in the church that we find people who are not competent and think praying in tongues will cover for incompetence go for competence that's what the law of value says train yourself equip yourself by the grace of god with all humility one of the reasons why we are enjoying good sound and all of this thing is because the people in the department are training and building themselves consistently how many of you have been blessed by the worship team how many of you have been blessed by the media people dio please stand up dio just came back hallelujah he had been on training with um, frontline media academy hosting some of the best media people around the nation for two weeks after that he went to lagos to have another training does he pray in tongues answer me has he been attending miracle service why did he go for training his article was recently um i think so he was telling me one of his articles i hope you know last year he got the best student journalist in nigeria why in the world will he not get it the best student journalist hallelujah i needed to know that beyond tongues with all humility to god be the glory but one of the reasons why things are working for us is we have paid the price to delay instant gratification and build are you listening to me there are so many things many of you may not know let me give you an instance with one person how many of you know that Ejimi is a chartered wealth manager don't you think we are just some bunch of visionless pastors who have struggled and tried i pass here nowhere i pass here nowhere i just say well let's just quietly do ministry hallelujah go for knowledge provoke yourself stop looking for results right now go for knowledge and the results will follow you stop looking for results and no no go for knowledge hallelujah day and night when you come to our house i say it with all humility you can ask those who come around day and night either we are studying digging in the word or we are online researching on things or buying books or god jordan is here ask him he's the one who supplies books for us as soon as he comes back from lagos he's calling us there is this book there is that book go for knowledge those who are above are those who go for knowledge favor is when preparation meets opportunity many of you have not prepared yourself you will disappoint yourself in the days of opportunity esther prepared herself for one year and when the opportunity came she took advantage of it bishop td jakes wrote a book maximizing the moment we must learn how to maximize the moment 
Hallelujah. The law of value. Sit down. Build yourself. God has told you you're going to have an event management and a catering, a catering institute. How many world top caterers do you know? How many do you know in Nigeria? If you cannot list five proficient people in the field you believe God will bless you with, I am convinced you are not serious. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? You want to do interior decor or you want to do fashion. If you cannot list five proficient people who have made it in your field, you are not serious at all. Hallelujah. You want to sing. You've written 36 songs. And you want to break them into three and release all the albums. Who are the Christian artists you know in the world? You don't know. What's the latest album by Kotka? You don't know. I don't care. All I know is that we have a church with large people. There are plenty of people in Koinonia. If I release this album now, Abba, it will sell. Hallelujah. Let me say something with all humility. Hope is here. She bakes. And she really aspires to bake very well. I have watched her improve. Hallelujah. I have watched I remember a time when she came and met me and we sat down and began to talk and to build ourselves how many of you are building yourselves I'm not supposed to be saying this but I'm just saying it to provoke you to challenge you hallelujah how many people are building themselves Mukhtar is here the chief usher he has been building himself he runs a laundry he runs a laundry as a student. He's the one who launders our clothes. Kenny runs a laundry. Building themselves. And what many of us do is to sit down. You are gisting from morning till night. Let me tell you something. That kind of mindset is the mindset that has caused many people to be disappointed. Are you getting blessed tonight? So sit down. Tell yourself, sit down say it sit down say settle down and build yourself the law of value go for knowledge go for excellence be competent i made up my mind that there is no field god has asked me to rule and reign that i'll be ashamed bible says study to show yourself approved a workman we only use it for school and university what happens when you graduate Study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? Number two. The law of investments. I've said it. The only way money grows is by investment. Many of us have no knowledge of the financial vehicles that are available. Many of us do not know. Highest, what many of us know about investment is that you can have a small shop, open your have your gari, indomie, weave on, put your little weave on, and 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 add add shampoo, and and then that's all. I know it's unfortunate our educational system is not teaching us, but how many of us have made it a point of duty to go out of the box and help yourself? hallelujah are you getting blessed the only way money grows is when you invest can i tell you something many ministries are poor today not because they don't have partners they are always running on deficit you collect one million as your offering your budget is one million how in the world do you plan to be rich That's why we have people begging every day. Ministers begging, come help me now. Are you could not see my life? Am I not begging? <laughs> I'm sorry if I sound arrogant. I'm touching a topic that I think is very important. Hallelujah. Very important. The law of investment. And so what's your assignment? Sit down this night and throughout this week. Begin to find out all the business vehicles that are available for you. That you can start with your 1,000, 2,000. Tolu, please stand up. 
I remember I'm saying it uh, um, I remember when she used to meet me and talk and we used to talk about different business things she was really tired and said she wanted God to help her today how many of you know the recharge card this thing just in front of chapel that's her own it belongs to her she's the owner today has he reduced your prayer point sweetheart no no no. i mean has he reduced your prayer points on finances well she, i'm not sure she understands what i'm saying hallelujah how many of please sit down god bless you how many of us go to god and the time you are supposed to use and bless him you plan to pray for six hours five hours is crying and begging i said do this thing for me now god you are able to by the grace of god one of the things that has accelerated our spiritual life is we have minimal time talking about money in the place of prayer so i can go to the place of prayer and say i hail you most high you can't be worshiping god like that when there's fire burning under you hallelujah number three the law of accumulation i'll stop there the law of accumulation the law of accumulation simply put big is small plus small plus small plus small plus small i can I, I keep i keep laughing at people who are waiting and wishing you ask them they bring their budget and all of this say how much say 10 million naira. say i have faith say fine you have been chopping all the 10 million in the little five five thousand and ten ten thousand you have been blowing you see there's a 20,000 oh jare you know to do all of these things and then you go and spend it on useless things do you not realize that one million naira is one thousand naira in one thousand places hello is that correct let me give you an assignment go to the bank and tell them to give you a total of all the money that's entered your account since you open it you see how many estates you would have built by now where did the estates go to your trainers or your 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 t-shirts that you do as if me bend down boutique the new creation in christ man really what in the world is wrong with you to go and take that conserve it a day will come you can own a boutique stop trying to prove points those you are trying to prove a point to they are not even looking at you hallelujah once upon a time we ate in community market we're happy about it today and we are glad for the transition hallelujah learn to appreciate your transitions don't be ashamed of it someone comes and he sees you at that joint that daraka joint where they sell akara and this is oh yeah looking as if you don't don't you know it you just sit there in the smoke no problem say mama 13 era add 15 era on and you are praying lord this is not my future it's just a journey lord this is not my future somebody says ah pastor yeah no problem at least i'm not defrauding anybody in church there was a time we used to drink tea at this meshai joint you don't know it doesn't look like it now oh there was that glorious time and Jimmy was at the forefront of it And indomie they'll tie it for you they'll fry it you will not even do well they'll just turn it i know it oh don't be deceived by this suit we have been there so what is wrong if you are there now why are you embarrassed about it you are spending two two thousand in mr biggs every day where are you going with it you are not producing anything there's no inflow but you are spending money doesn't make sense hallelujah we don't eat if there's no fish in our food every day 100, 100 naira is going on 300 naira you are eating in cafeteria purely and you know that there's not much coming in the law of accumulation says that you begin to save small by small the journey of a thousand miles begins with what ah josh is only ten thousand they give me per month find out the person who collects two thousand per session who has been saving 
and has 20,000 now. Warren Buffett, one of the world's richest person. Hallelujah. He was asked a simple question. And he was said, ah, how are you so rich like this? He said he had been investing and he had allowed his investments to grow for over 38 years. And they said, what is your worst mistake in life? He started investing at age 8. He said, my worst investment is I started investing late. How old are you? Happy birthday. How old are you? Hallelujah. Is this a call for us tonight? Is this a call for us to sit up? Many of us are on steady allowance. 100,000, 50,000 every week. Yet our lives have not changed. Why? Because we are wasting it day and night. And you are saying, God, more. God will never give you more until you prove you are faithful. Are you listening to me? Until you prove you are faithful. We'll have to stop here for now. I hope you were able to learn something. I look forward to a time when we'll, we'll take a week and we'll do a proper financial seminar. Hallelujah. Are you, are you looking forward to that time? Because it's our desire that our life will change. Do you know that if your life changes, you will give more? Many of you have a heart to give. It's just that the means is not there. How many of you feel very bad when there are projects and you truly cannot give? You feel very bad. The only way is not pray and say, Lord, those who don't have, help them to give. This is how God helps them to give. Light shines in the darkness. Rise up on your feet and let's pray. God bless us. Go ahead and just pray in tongues for one minute. We're wrapping up tonight. Say, Lord, thank you for this knowledge. Grace to mix your word with faith. A season has come for me to change my life change my finances the kingdom will move forward when you're financially empowered your families will move forward you will end pain and tears and tragedy in your family the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed hallelujah before I round up, let me say this. Malachi chapter 3 from verse 8 to 12 gives us the foundation of a believer's prosperity. Hallelujah. The foundation. Begins to talk about our tithe and our offerings. There are so many people here who are not faithful in tithing. You're not faithful in tithing. You've been hearing about your tithe a tenth percent and you are... You are, being, you are being deceived the eyes this man of God the Bible says ye are cursed verse 9 please verse 9 it says ye are cursed with a curse for ye have robbed me even let's start from verse 8 please let's run to it I know we are out of time verse 8 very quickly please will a man rob God he said yet ye have robbed me but ye say wherein have we robbed thee he said what in tithes so if you don't tithe, you are a thief, you are a robber. So says the word of God. As a result, verse 10 or verse 9, it says, You are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Verse 10. Bring you what? All the tithes into my storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. He said, Prove me. Now hear we say the Lord, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall be no room enough to receive it verse 11 it says and i will rebuke this is the spiritual agency behind the poverty of many families it's called the devourer i will rebuke the devourer for your sake and it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field thus said the lord verse 12 the last verse and all nations shall call you blessed for ye shall be a dislike some land saith the lord of hosts there are several of us here we have been praying and fasting and we are not faithful in our tithe i'd like you to know that you are going to pray tonight and say lord i realize i've been unfaithful i receive grace tonight to be diligent in my tithing as you add all other laws diligent in your tithing diligent in your giving many of us are stingy and greedy 
the Bible says, there is he that scattered and increased. There is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty. Go ahead and pray. Say, Lord, greed and selfishness. I command it out of my life. I am a giver. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't do this, but let me provoke everyone. Please, I'd like you to bring out a seed. Bring out a seed, everybody. Please just, just hold something in your hand. Hold hand. This is for someone who can. I need everybody to connect with something. Who doesn't have something to hold on to? I'm serious. Who doesn't have? Come. Hallelujah. Hold on to something. Hallelujah. Please hold on to something. Who doesn't have? Let me just give one more person. We are not trying to get your money, brothers and sisters. I'd like you to bring out a seed. I want to pray for you. Don't you think, I know that there are ministers who are out to cheat people and mislead people. Please, ushers, very quickly, can we have you come up with all shooting baskets right in front? Do it quickly, please. We are out of time. We have to do this. Hallelujah very very quickly please ushers run and come hallelujah i want to pray no just hold it stand at the rows and at the eye inside and outside we are going to do that quickly please if you don't have a seed in your hand hold the hands of someone who has just connect please don't be ashamed we are very serious hallelujah we are going to pray and say lord we make up our minds to be diligent in tithing diligent in giving and diligent in abiding by this principle lift up your voice and pray that's the prayer point grace in my tithe oh god grace come on pray in my tithe i receive grace to be a faithful tither i stop robbing god Grace to be a tither. Grace to be a tither. Grace to be faithful. God will not rob you. Grace to be a tither. Now pray and say, Lord, grace to give. I break the spirit of greed. Go ahead and pray. Many of you are greedy. Many of you are stingy. That's why you will not move forward financially. Say, Lord, I break that spirit of greed. That spirit that will only withhold, thinking God wants to cheat you. I break that spirit of greed. God is a good God. He will not rob you. Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to pray for this seed very quickly. As I pray for this seed, I'll drop it. As you drop your seed, begin to pray all of these points the law of value and the rest say lord this week i sit down many of you god will give you ideas god will give you things don't please take it seriously help let's help our families if they couldn't help us let's help them hallelujah father i pray lift up your sin father we are doing this according to the word of the lord i pray lord that there will be an avalanche of wealth riches and prosperity this is a prosperous ministry you have blessed us with it we have the power to prosper lord there are people trusting you for school fees there are families trusting you they are in debt they are in recessions they are trusting you many have lost in their businesses and investments many are trusting you to get by lord i pray that as this seed is casted prophetically let people begin to enter unusual realms of concepts insights ideas let fear die that fear that stops you from taking bold steps let it die god is with you god is with you you will not fail you will not fail hallelujah now go ahead and drop your seed and begin to pray in tongues drop your seed and in one minute begin to pray in tongues please let's hurry up we're out of time as you drop your seed pray in the spirit in the name of jesus i'm moving forward in the name of jesus 
the grace of God is speaking for me in my finances in the name of Jesus in my finances in the name of Jesus on behalf of my family on behalf of my ministry on behalf of my business pray for your family pray for your ministry pray for your church pray for your business say Lord enough is enough enough is enough enough is enough let my light break forth inside and outside pray 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 when men say there is a casting down will say there is a lifting up there is a lifting up there is a lifting up come on pray pray in the spirit I know we're out of time but this is important for your destiny pray in the spirit let the least among us be as great as David let the least among us be as great as David let the least among us be as great as David Lord we believe your word you are not a man that you should lie you are not the son of man that you should repent your word is yea your word is amen hallelujah hallelujah very quickly three books to help you in your finances money will not make you rich money won't make you rich by Sunday Adelaja please buy it it's available at the Jordan bookstore buy the truth it's part of the law of value money won't make you rich Sunday Adelaja we recommend three of them unfair advantage Robert Kiyosaki unfair advantage hallelujah covenant of wealth Bishop David Oyedeko covenant of wealth Bishop David Oyedeko the law of prosperity Kenneth Copeland the law of prosperity Kenneth Copeland please write it I'll repeat it very quickly. Money won't make you rich. Sunday Adelaja. Unfair Advantage by Robert Kiyosaki. I don't like many of his books, but that one book is a very powerful one. Hallelujah. The Covenant of Wealth by Bishop David Oyedeko. Hallelujah. There are many unhealthy books you should not read. They come from Satan. One of it is called the 48 Laws of Power. Don't you ever find yourself reading those books. They look like they are financial books. They are, they are books orchestrated by demons. They will cause you not to fear the Lord and they will teach you how to manipulate people. By the grace of God, we carefully select books that we have read, that we understand that their principles are consistent with the Word of God hallelujah please read sit down this week get a new exercise book write my financial destiny you have one on your dreams and visions write one on your finances hallelujah thank you jesus thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.